Hey kids, welcome to part two of Abe Lincoln at last. Uh, we saw in the first part that uh, Jack and Annie are trying to help out Teddy because he uh, put Merlin's pet penguin Penny under a spell accidentally, turned it turned Penny into stone, and they've got to collect four things, not four four things to. Uh, uh, free Penny from this spell. Jack and Annie have already collected two things, I guess. And uh, they're collecting the third thing now, which is a feather. Their rhyme set that they got in the treehouse said the third thing to break the spell is a single feather from a hero's hand. Use it wisely to give him hope. The hope he needs to heal his land. And they've also got their uh, nonfiction book called The Life of Abraham Lincoln. So they figure they're going to get this feather from Abraham Lincoln. They also have a little blue bottle full of some liquid, I guess. And the notes with that bottle said, take a sip, or the label on the bottle said, take a sip, make a wish for one thing to help you on your mission. Remember, trust the magic. <coughs> and then they, they wish to go there and here we go. You're going to hear things like dogs barking and planes flying over because I'm in the backyard. Jack shivered. The air was chilly, but the sun was bright. Bare branches outside the treehouse swayed in the wind. Annie was wearing a long dress with an apron. Jack wore a cotton shirt over a red undershirt and a pair of trousers, those are pants, with suspenders. His backpack had turned into a leather bag. Remember, his backpack always turns into either a cloth bag or a leather bag. <clears throat> Jack looked into the bag. Inside were his notebook and a pencil, the message from Teddy and Kathleen, and the bottle with the magic potion. Good, he said. It's all here. We've worn clothes like these before, said Annie. Yeah, we ran uh, from that twister on the prairie, said Jack. They were wearing the same clothes. And when we helped Clara Barton in the Civil War, said Annie. Right, said Jack. So, did we land at the White House? By the way, both of those books with the Twister and the Civil War are books we were going to read soon, but ran out of time. So anyway, Jack's asking, are we, at the light, uh, are we at the White House? They looked out the window. The treehouse had landed in a grove of bare, sunlit trees. Beyond the trees, horse-drawn carriages rumbled over a circular carriageway toward a stately white mansion with tall columns. Oh, man, whispered Jack. The White House was breathtaking in the morning air, bathed in sunlight. A crowd was gathered outside the front entrance, men in long black coats and tall hats, and women in hoop skirts and bonnets with big bows. Looks like lots of people are visiting Abraham Lincoln today, said Annie. Jack thumbed through their research book until he found another black and white photograph of the White House. He read aloud, When Abraham Lincoln became president in 1861, the White House was considered to belong to all the citizens of the country as well as to the president and his family. Anyone could walk right in. President Lincoln sometimes found it hard to work in his White House office because of the number of people swarming through the building. So anyone can just walk right into the White House and look for the president, said Annie. That's crazy, said Jack. But it's good for us, said Annie. I guess, said Jack. But I don't want to be one of those people who make it hard for the president to work. Don't forget, said Annie, we're supposed to give him hope with a feather that he's supposed to give us, said Jack. He shook his head, because he doesn't understand it, and then took out their note from Teddy and Kathleen. The third thing to break the spell is a single feather from a hero's hand. Use it wisely to give him hope, the hope that he needs to heal his land. How can we get a feather from him, said Jack? How can, how can he give him hope? It's better to do just one thing at a time, said Annie. First, we have to find the president. Hey, Willie, look, someone shouted from below. It's a treehouse, see, see? Oh no, whispered Jack. Jack and Annie peeked out the window. A boy about seven or eight years old was looking up at the treehouse. The boy wore baggy, baggy gray trousers with suspenders and a white shirt. He had dark piercing eyes. Hello, the boy shouted when he saw Jack and Annie. Who are you? Why are you in our treehouse? Your treehouse, said Jack. It's not your treehouse. Yes, it is, the boy said confidently. Tad, hush. An older boy ran to join the younger one. He had a friendly, open smile and looked to be around Jack's age. Don't mind my brother Tad, he shouted. 
But it's ours, Willie, said Tad. The White House is our house, and the tree house is in our yard. Oh, man, thought Jack. That was what the book said, too. The White House was considered to belong to all the citizens of the country, as well as to the president. I'm sorry, but this tree house is not like the White House, Jack called. It doesn't belong to the citizens of the country. It's ours. No, it's not, yelled Tad. I'm coming up. No, you're not, Jack yelled back. He reached for the rope ladder to pull it up, but Tad had already started climbing. Hide our stuff, Jack said to Annie. Jack quickly pushed the Lincoln book into his leather bag. Annie stuck their note and the tiny bottle into her apron pocket. Tad, come back, called Willie. Leave him alone. Tad scrambled into the treehouse. He grinned at Jack and Annie, his dark eyes gleaming. I'm a pirate captain, and I'm taking over your ship. Tad shook his small fist in Jack's face. Fight me, he shouted. Cut it out, said Jack, waving him away. Tad, Willie shouted from below. The boy just laughed like a maniac and danced around the treehouse trying to box with Jack. This is my shaft now, matey. Quit it, said Jack. Tad, his brother yelled again. Your brother's calling you, Annie said firmly to Tad. Go, now. Who are you to boss me, missy, Tad said, jutting out his chin. Annie laughed. I'm not a missy, shrimp. She said, I'm Annie, and this is my brother Jack. Tad lowered his fist. Oh, hello, Annie, I'm Tad. He put out his hand, and Annie shook it. Pleased to meet you, said Tad, completely dropping his role as pirate captain. What are you and Jack doing today? Actually, we're hoping to meet with President Lincoln, Annie said. Really, said Tad? Me and Willie know a secret. He gave them a, sl a sly grin. If you come with us, we'll take you straight to the president. I give you my word. Thanks, but we can handle it ourselves, said Jack. The last thing he wanted was for this kid to get in their way. But I want to help you. Come with me, said Tad. He started down the ladder. Should we go with him? Annie whispered. No, he's just making stuff up, said Jack. Are you coming down, called Tad? Or should I come back up so we can play? Darn, said Jack under his breath. Let's go, just to get him away from the treehouse. Jack grabbed his bag. Suddenly, Tad poked his head back into the treehouse. Are you coming or not, he said. Yes, go, said Annie. What's in your bag, asked Tad. Nothing, said Jack. Go back down. He didn't want Tad to see their Lincoln book. Let me see, said Tad, climbing into the treehouse again. What's inside? Nothing. He told you nothing, said Annie. Then why is he bringing it with him, Tad asked her. Fine, I'll leave it, Jack said crossly. He dropped the leather bag at the floor. Happy? Let's go. Yes, let's go, said Tad, and he disappeared down the ladder again. Jack reached into his bag, grabbed a small notebook and pencil, and stuck them into the pack, into the back pocket of his pants. I'll come back later to get the book, Jack whispered, after we get rid of this kid. Annie smiled. If we can, she said. Then she stuck, and then she and Jack started down the rope ladder. Willie was waiting at the bottom of the ladder. Hello, he said. Willie, this is Jack and Annie, said Tad. I told them that you and I have a secret. He gave Willie a, Willie a meaningful look. I told them we'd take them to meet the president. I gave them my word. Oh, you did, did you, said Willie. Hello, Jack and Annie. He shook hands with them. I apologize for Tad, he added. My brother is very high-spirited. And Willie's sweet as pie, said Tad, making a face. Come on, you all. To the White House, he saluted, then took huge marching steps across the lawn. So does Tad really know the president? Annie asked as she and Jack walked with Willie. He does, said Willie with a smile, and so do I. Oh, cool, said Jack. He liked Willie's kind, mature manner. He wouldn't mind if Willie introduced them to the president. Do you think uh, you could introduce us? If Tad doesn't introduce you first, said Willie, then I'd be happy to. That would be great, said Jack. As Tad marched ahead of them, Jack, Annie, and Willie walked through the sun-dappled grove of trees. The air was chilly, but it smelled like spring. It looked like spring, too. Tiny buds sprouted from bare branches. Birds flitted from tree to tree, and robins hunted for worms in the green grass. Are your parents visiting the White House today? Annie asked Willie. You could say that, said Willie. Look at me, Tad called. He was running backward up the carriageway. Watch out, Tad, shouted Willie. Tad jumped out of the path of a horse-drawn carriage just in time. The carriage stopped in front of the president's house. The crowd was huge now. As people tried to squeeze through the front doors, some waved pieces of paper at the guard. Everyone wants to meet the new president, said Tad. Sorry, kids, lost my place. My 
My kids keep tapping on the window at me and bugging me. But I love them. All right, here we go. Anyway, uh, there was a huge crowd in front of the White House. As people tried to squeeze through the front doors, some waved pieces of paper at the guard. Everyone wants to meet the new president, said Tad. They all want something from him. Don't talk that way, Tad, said Willie. He turned to Jack and Annie. They're mostly looking for jobs in the government. They have to take care of their families. Tad led the way past the carriages and between the columns to the crowd at the door. Allow us to enter, he shouted to the guard at the door. Jack and Annie are here, important friends of the president. To Jack's amazement, the guard did as, Teddy com as Tad commanded. The man moved people aside and let Tad, Willie, and Annie, and Jack walk right into the White House. Jack trailed behind as they all passed through the entranceway. From there, they went around a bronze screen and into a wide hall filled with grown-ups. Make way, shouted Tad as he squeezed through the crowd. A few women squealed. Their hoop skirts rocked and swirled. Stop, Tad, said Willie, grabbing his brother. Calm yourself. No kidding, thought Jack. He liked Willie a lot, but Tad was too wild and unpredictable. Tad laughed and broke loose from his big brother, and he ran into a room off the hallway. Willie and Annie hurried after him. A moment later, Jack heard someone banging on a piano. Jack followed cautiously. He went through a door and into a huge parlor filled with women and girls sipping tea from china cups. The room had furniture covered in red satin. There was a large portrait of George Washington on the wall by the tall windows. No one was paying any attention to Tad as he pounded away on the piano keys. Even Willie was ignoring him. He was busy introducing Annie to a plump, dark-haired woman sitting on a sofa. Why don't the grown-ups stop this bratty kid, Jack wondered. Where are his parents? The White House guards, the Secret Service. Tad turned his head and caught Jack frowning at him. He jumped up from the piano bench, rushed over and Jack grabbed Jack's hand. Sorry, mate, I almost forgot. I gave you my word, he said. Come along. Kids, I'm gonna show you a picture while this plane flies over here in this parlor. So, uh, Tad, the bratty kid, is leading uh, Jack. He said he's going to take him to the president. We'll find out what happens. Jack tried to free himself from Tad as the boy pulled him out of the parlor. Stop, let me go. I have to wait for my sister, said Jack. He looked back and saw Willie and Annie still talking to the woman on the sofa. They'll catch up to us, said Tad. Come along. I have a secret place. I'm sorry. I have a secret that you won't believe. Please, leave me alone, said Jack. No, come with me or I'll start screaming, said Tad, and I can scream very, very loud. He had a wild look in his eye. Oh, no, Jack thought. This kid was totally insane. Don't scream, don't scream. Just hold on a second, he called out. Annie, Willie, but neither of them looked up. Come on, it's now or never, said Tad. He pulled Jack down the carpeted hallway toward a wide staircase. Let go, let go of me, I'm serious, said Jack. Tad let go of him. Please, please come up the stairs with me, he begged. If you don't, I'll... He opened his wide mouth. <sighs> Fine, I'll come, Jack said through his teeth. He let Tad pull him through a group of grown-ups climbing the stairs. When we get to the top, I'll run back down, Jack thought. Then he can scream as loud as he wants. As soon as they reached the hallway on the second floor, Jack turned around to run. But the stairway was packed with too many people to escape. Tad grabbed Jack by the arm and pulled him to a door off the hall. The president is right in there, I promise, he whispered. Do you want to meet him or not? Not, said Jack, at least not with you, he thought. But you said you did, said uh, Tad. He threw open the door and pulled Jack inside, then closed the door behind them. Jack looked around. The room was empty of people. It had a huge wooden bed with purple drapes. Flying birds were carved into the black wood. This must be the president's bedroom, Jack thought with awe and horror. He whirled around, but Tad gripped the door handle. We can't stay here, Tad. Jack whispered furiously, we'll get in terrible trouble. But President Lincoln is there in his dressing room, said Tad. He grinned, pointing to a closed door off the bedroom. I told you, I'd take you to him. You are crazy, Jack whispered. Whispered, move, I'm leaving before we get caught. Suddenly, Tad groaned and fell to the floor. Oh. Tad, said Jack. He bent down to check on him. Tad, are you? Tad grabbed Jack's arm and pulled him to the floor just as the dressing room door opened. Hide, hide, Tad whispered. He scrambled under the big wooden bed. Jack frantically crawled after him. Jack held his breath as they lay on the stu their stomachs under the bed. 
His heart was beating so hard that he thought he was going to have a heart attack. Tad covered his mouth and shook with silent laughter. Two large feet in black socks stopped beside the bed. Jack felt the bed sink down. A pair of hands put a pair of large leather shoes down on the floor. The feet slipped into the shoes. The weight of the bed lifted off, I'm sorry, then the weight lifted off the bed and the shoes stepped forward. Here's Jack looking at the, at the feet from under the bed. Tad crawled silently out from under the bed. Then he tackled the person wearing the shoes. The man yelled and fell to the floor. Tad sat on top of him and beat him with his small fist. From his hiding place, Jack could see a dark-haired man lying on his side, groaning and moaning. Tad was attacking the President of the United States. Anyway, that's enough for one day. Uh, part two is over. We'll read on next time and find out what happens.